Classic. They're off. Nine runners over one mile in the Tattersall's Irish 2000 Guineas and up for the lead, Ivy League with Atomic Jones. Buckaroo in the center on the outside is Malex as they settle down, coming towards the end of the first furlong. The leaders are tracked by Native Trail in the all royal blue of Godolphin as they head for the elbow. And Malex picks it up from Atomic Jones, followed by Ivy League on the outside, close up as Wexford Native as they straighten at the sixth. The Native Trail on the inside as Malex picks up an early couple of lengths advantage over Atomic Jones in third place is Wexford Native, the Native Trail and Ivy League. Buckaroo next on the outside with the final three heading for the halfway stage. Duke de Sace, Imperial Fighter and New Energy is last of all. Coming on to the four mark, the halfway stage in the Tattles of Irish 2000 Guineas, little changes up front. It's Malix in the lead from Atomic Jones. Wexford Native improves on the outside. A couple of lengths back to Ivy League and on the inside is native trail coming towards the final three furlongs and it's Malik's holding on to a small advantage over Wexford native beginning a run native trail then Atomic Jones Ivy League Buckaroo in the middle of the track then Imperial Fighter New Energy and Duke de Sace as they race to the final furlong and a half Wexford native is pressed one from the rail by native trail New Energy from last is running a big race on the outside is Imperial Fighter inside the final 200 yards it's native trail going to the front from Wexford Native, Native Trail, New Energy is running on in the second. Native Trail is back on the winning trail in the Tattles of Zardish, 2000 guineas. Beating New Energy, Imperial Fighter on the outside, Wexford Native on the inner. Charlie Appleby joins us now after Native Trail completed an extraordinary hat-trick for the stable of classic victories. Charlie, firstly congratulations. Just tell us how proud you are of that achievement by you and the whole team at home. Oh, no, um, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Um, most importantly, like I say, it's this... Uh, Fantastic achievement and to make history the way it's been done for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and Team Godolphin and, and, and the team at Moulton Paddocks. They've done such a you know, fantastic job from, from all winter. You know what it's like yourself, you know, with these two year olds when you're going through the winter, they're long winters and uh, you know, he's just never missed a beat, like like all of them. And uh, like I said we've been very fortunate enough to come into these these group one races with fancied horses and so there's there's of course there's a certain amount of I wouldn't say pressure, but you you excitement, nerves and everything else, but uh, when I saw him cross the line today, I have to say it was a sigh of relief to say he's got the job done. Can you just describe your emotions for us watching the race, because it can't have been easy at times. There was a moment, just briefly, where it did look like he might be in a bit of a pocket. Yeah, but the one thing about him, William, he's ridden him all of his race course experiences and he rides him so much at home, he knows him inside out and, and you know, the plan was always to go forward and try and sit box seat, which that didn't come out, you know, straight off the bat and, and but where William was sat, I was, dare I say, I was confident William knows the horse so well and um, whatever William's decision was where to park him up, it was going to be hopefully the right one and, you know, when you say he got, it was in that sort of a bit of a pocket there, the one thing I was confident coming into the race was he was the class horse and he had the strength there. If he needs to make a hole, he can make a hole. Not, you know, he's just, he's just, he's a big imposing horse. And um, I was, it was one of those nice races to watch. They're all joking apart. Uh, it was a nice race to watch. And I wasn't, to be, sorry, relief yes, when he crossed the line, but I wasn't anxious throughout the race. And Charlie, we all know, obviously, he was a champion juvenile, multiple group one winner. Would it, though, have almost felt like a bit of a travesty if this horse hadn't added a classic to his CV? For sure, yeah. I mean, you know, everyone wants to see the, the the, the champion two-year-old generation come up hopefully and you know, fulfill their three-year-old careers and that's what he's done and, and I say he lost nothing in defeat in the, in, in the, the English guineas there. You know, Caribus is a, is a horse that we fought highly of and you know people can have their opinions of we were drawn on two flanks and had they been drawn together would it have been a, you know, a, a closer contest? Well we never know that but this horse doesn't have to do, have to do you know, prove himself anymore. He's a classic winner at three and I'm delighted for, like I say, the whole team at Moulton Paddocks and, and uh, His Highness and uh, Team Godolphin and, uh, you know, Norman Williamson being here and, uh, the, 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 you know, David and Anthony have bought him there. So, uh, yeah, it's, everyone's, everyone's got their, uh, their day in the sun, as they say. And Charlie, as well as completing a tremendous hat-trick, obviously, with those classic successes in Britain, France, here in Ireland, it does set up a tremendous second half of the season if you like what sort of ideas have you got in your head about the three horses now Look, i think they're, they're, as i say they're nice healthy conversations to have instead of having to try and find one that's got to try and win a race to try and find one where you've got to try and potentially keep them apart or get the best out of them um modern games he'll head to the to the french derby um you know we know it might be right on the end of his sort of petrol gauge should we say but um 
he's a horse that do, races the right way round. He gives himself every chance to get the, the 10 round there at Longchamp or Shanti. And um, then um, as respects to Caribus and uh, Native Trail, Caribus was always going to go straight to the St. James's Palace. But now this horse will have to come into conversation over the next sort of 10 days, two weeks of, you know, what will we like them to sort of take each other on again. I mean, you know, we all know that St. James's Palace is a fantastic race and it's the last chance of these three roles competing over the mile, you know, against one another. So, um, yeah, nice conversation to have. The answer I don't know is the honest answer. <laughs> Time will tell. Charlie, with this horse as well, 10 furlongs has been spoken about as a real possibility for him later on. Is that at the back of your mind still? I mean, look, he, he gives himself, he's got a, a racing head there that he give himself a chance to get the 10. Um, yeah, on, on pedigree, you can, you can, yeah. There's a, a strong, com, you know, conversation being had to say yes on the damn side he could, but he's an oasis dream. He's doing nothing wrong over the mile at the moment, but he, you have to say he does his best work. It's always been the last. He, when he goes through the lines, his strongest part of his race. So um, uh, I, I wouldn't knock it, you know, knock it out of the park and say no, he's not going to to get ten. Um, but like I say, more important, I think the conversations will be had over the next sort of 10 days in, in, in respects to do we allow the pair of them to take each other on in uh, St. James's Palace first. We look forward to seeing what the outcomes of those are. In the meantime, enjoy this one, Charlie. It's a tremendous achievement. And once again, well done. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very so much. Very Thanks kind. Thank you. Thank you. William Buick joins us after the favourite native trails win in the Tattersall's Irish 2000 Guineas. William, congratulations, first of all. What's the overriding emotion there? I'd imagine almost a bit of relief, is it? <laughs> yeah, like relief, yeah. You took the words out of my mouth. Not for sure. But look, you know, you've got to enjoy these moments. And, and, and I really do. You know, he's, he's an exceptional horse. Uh, and he's a real joy to ride. You know, he's uncomplicated. He, he's there for you when you need him. And, and I'm, 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 he really deserved to win the Guineas after going down narrowly at Newmarket. So, you know, great job by everyone involved, and it was, it was great. Just talk us through the race if you can, because I'm sure you'd rather not have been drawn stall one in an ideal world. Did you kind of half envisage the situation the way it happened? Yeah, I, I did a little bit, and I, I sort of knew from a fair way out that I'd be having to work my way out a little bit, um, and I had the horse to do it. He's got plenty of size, plenty of scope, and you know we got a nice seam towards the outside and got running in time so it was it was actually very straightforward but look you, you know you, you, you in these top races you, you need the margins to go your way but you know he was he, he's he does help in that way you know he, he's very uncomplicated as we see so often with this guy William he was really strong at the finish through the line was there ever a doubt in your mind that there might be something coming from behind yeah yeah I, I, I thought I, I could see them in the corner of my eye so you know I just had to keep him up to his work really and I suppose on faster ground, you might have seen a, a, a more explosive performance from him because he has got a good turn of foot, but this slower ground possibly just blunted him a little bit. Fantastic achievement as well for the yard. I mean, that Guinea's treble, it's pretty pretty almost unprecedented. Uh, amazing, yeah, three different horses, unbelievable. Um, it's credit to, to Charlie and his whole team and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. So, fantastic, great to be part of it. And uh, yeah. What's your feeling about the future now, William, with this guy? Uh, there has been talk about him trying a mile and a quarter. Are you happy enough staying at a mile? For now, yeah, but he will get a mile and a quarter. I, I guess um, the team will come back, go back home and assess the situation and see where the other horses are going as well, I suppose. Um, but this fella, he, he's certainly a mile and a quarter candidate, I would say, yeah. And final question, Brad, the brief. That was a great spare to pick up, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really good, yeah. He likes this bit of juice in the ground. Um, toughed it out very well. Well done, great day. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Cheers. Thank you.